Vicki, you ready? Yes, I'm ready. <laughs> you might have to be unready. <laughs> Sorry. It's all right. Uh, 7 o'clock, call to order, render meeting here at City Rents Pass, City Hall, 600 West Cleveland Boulevard, September 8, 2015, 7 p.m. Please rise for the invocation. Lord, I'd like to give you thanks for this beautiful day. We ask you to help guide us as we come up for decisions for the city of Rancis Pass. We ask you to bless our children and our citizens here. Watch over us all. Take care of us. Please bless the ones that aren't feeling so good. They heal. And please uh, bless all the caregivers that are out there trying to make comfort in their lives. We ask you, Lord, in your name, amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. This is going to bring us to item number three, presentations and proclamations. A quarterly presentation by Becky McMillan, Interim Executive Director of San Patricia Economic Development Corporation. Okay. That item will be tabled. And then this is going to bring us to item number five. It's going to be citizen comments. Please state your name, your address, and you have three minutes to state your business. The floor is now open for citizen comments. Anybody want to go first? Mrs. Carroll? My name is Carol Salinas. I'm a resident of Aransas Pass, and I... Uh, heard that there was going to be an item on the agenda tonight about reduction in force and I just want to say we recently put in a new building hired a lot of new people and now we're laying off our employees we are nothing without our employees employees that have been with us a long time um, you you as a council can pass all the laws rules ordinances you want but you have to have employees to enforce them and sometimes you have to do it. I understand that budget crunches. But I do hope that when these decisions are made, and I, I just don't look at older age people as being less healthy, perhaps, and maybe it's time for them to retire. Sometimes when I went through the Citizens Academy, some of the departments had the older managers, employees, the more stability, and have the better record in our town. And I just want to say that we've got, for the most part, we've got a good group of employees, and, and I, I'm really disappointed that we have to come to that. Thank you, Carol. Yes, sir. My name's Charles Icke. I, I live at 240 Ransom Road in Ransom RV Park. And the reason I'm here, I was reading the minutes on the meeting, and it says uh, continually improving, maintaining, and replacing all facets of infrastructure, sewer streets, parks, drainage. Uh, had a problem problem with drainage out there, you know, and uh, talked to Sid about it, and uh, went to the city works department, talked to Sid about it, said they can't do anything about it. The the Ransom Road is the drainage is not draining properly the, the there's an easement that runs behind ransom rv park parallel to commercial and it's a utility easement there's telephone posts on both sides and they've let y'all have let the they've let that uh, easement grow up with trees and stuff like that so the water can't run out to the canal to drain out to the right. bay and instead of doing something about it they decided he you know he made an appointment uh, he made an appointment with me last Friday and said, oh, I'm sorry, I double booked the appointment. I'll make it for next Friday. And then meantime, I try to go meet him face to face and then he, and then he backs down. He says, well, I'm not going to do anything about it anyway. So 
there's no sense in meeting. So I didn't think that was quite right. No. So we have, we have a uh, there is an issue with the on-site drainage to Ransom RV Park. We're addressing it with the owner. All on-site drainage needs to be handled by the private property owner. Um, you either have to detain the water or retain the water on your site as a water feature or do something. Uh, there is an issue with just discharging water out into the ditches and into the private. So uh, he is a tenant at Ransom. We are trying to address with the owner because it is an owner issue to address the drainage on private property. I'm sure you talked to the owner, right? I mean, I'm sure you brought it up to the owner's attention. Yes, the, the owners, <coughs> the owners agreed to maintain the thing. If, the, but the tree is a, the easement what, that I'm talking about. There's a there's a easement utility easement there that needs to be it is overgrown so the water can't not drain from the park into the utility easement and to the canal. Utility and easements are not for drainage. Drainage easements are over 20 feet wide. It's it's more than just it's more than just clearing the easement and letting the water flow. We we have to look at it to see where the water is supposed to go. What's the receiving ditch? It's not just clear the easement and let water. So if you could, I go. mean, if you were to clear the easement and it still didn't drain, then you obviously you know that didn't work. But that's not the right. Are, are you talking about up there by the railroad track? No. no the, the, this is this is parallel to commercial. It backs up to the RV park. It, or it runs parallel to okay. commercial, mm -hmm. and there's telephone poles on both sides of the easement. And if they're all they all they get to do is one time, and it, it reason reasons like that is because nobody maintained it, and it, it, the maintainer needs to run right down there and take that tree out. The water can't drain out to the canal. There's a canal put out there for drainage, but it can't do its job because the water is forced back to Ransom Road, and Ransom Road is getting chug holes and everything else, and you know school buses. I drive a school bus for the Ransom Pass School District, and we got enough problem with the streets already with chug holes and everything else. So. Yes, sir, but that's private property. We can't we can't go out and. The, the easement is no the easement, utility easement is maintained by the city. Yes, sir. There's a difference between a utility easement and a drainage easement. Okay, so we, that, we have that utility easement is what I'm talking about, mm -hmm. and that's that's where the drainage goes mm -hmm. out to the canal. So we, we have to address with with the owner because there's more than just the, the simple exactly. And I asked mm -hmm. Ed to come out there and meet, and that's when he backed down on the appointment. Okay, we'll, we'll schedule an appointment. Miguel Santana is uh, Sid's boss. Okay. Name's Michael. Last name is Dallas. I was here at the last council meeting, and uh, this is regarding the issue on uh, West Myrtle. Once again, nothing's been done. There's nothing whatsoever been done on the street, okay? You got six foot, seven foot, weed growth, sunflowers. That is y'all's easement. Potholes a foot deep front of the road do so you not do you not care that, about people in this city that's what my question we do care about people as citizens of the city and you've not been long overdue since last october so when we first talked amazing about last october yes that's been over a year isn't yep. it hmm. seems like things would have worked by then right you think so i would think so too I appreciate let me, your time. Let me pull up a, an image to the council just so you know things. Uh, you know, I wish I wish it was as easy as just go putting oil in and fixing it. I really wish it was that easy. Let me show you a picture of, of what we are starting. It is our um, this was yesterday. No, it's actual work, sir. Step one. Yeah, but he's on the other side of the whole shebang. They're all over the place, Mayor. They, they really are. I, I mean, I, you guys have tasked us with prioritizing. 13th Street is a priority. There are some areas that we have to practice on to clear in order to start working on the streets. I don't have an answer for Mr. Dallas as to when we're going to get there. 
other than we're going to get there. These problems didn't happen overnight. Yeah, Let me ask you a question. You have all this new fine equipment and everything, but you can't mow? You can't mow the drainage ditch? That is your easement. Mr. Dallas, are you aware that the drainage ditch belongs to the navigation? I mean, to the drainage district? No, ma'am. Figure it out. That belongs to the city. Our ditches are maintained by the Sampcher Show Drainage District. And we have to get That's on their control. schedule. We have to get on their schedule. Price, right? Oh, it's about the same No, district. it's it's the drainage district period. They don't have a particular commissioner over them. Okay. We have to get on their schedule. They've been promising to come work in AP for a while. Miguel has been to visit them, physically asked for the drainage map, asked for other items we have not received. So it's um When's the last time we spoke with them? They promised to come by. They promised to deliver maps. They've not delivered anything. So, can we call them tomorrow? We will. We will pay a visit tomorrow. Miguel, when you pay a visit tomorrow, can you give me a call? Just leave me a message so I know when you spoke with them. Appreciate it. Okay. Hi, my name is Eric Navarro. I live at 108 West Hazlet. My family owns e &J Auto Truck and RV Service. I've come before y'all because there's a matter that um, we have always followed the city ordinance for record services and stuff. And um, it has come to our knowledge that there's been a record service in Port Aransas that does not have a lot over here that's been let on the rotation list. And um, can I give each one of y'all a copy of the ordinance? Sure. Yeah. Which is the same one you sent to us over there, right? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. On page two, our main concern is that where it lists right there, it says permittees shall maintain their business within the city limits of Aranda's Pass. Um, any record service that's ever opened up a business here has always had to have a vehicle, vehicle storage facility here. Um, I think it's a big inconvenience to the people, that whoever gets towed here, to have to go away in that ferry. And I also feel that it's taking business away from this town too. I would like for y'all to enforce this ordinance as we have always followed the ordinances. And the deal while we're going with more you know, records is to have more of a rotation ride or? Actually correct. <laughs> the, um, the ordinance says they must have an address or a place of business. It is not specific to where they need to store. BNT has an address and a place of business where their DBA is, where their uh, information that's filed with their uh, business license is filed. It is a city of Aransas Pass. Nowhere in the ordinance that Mr. Kindervater has placed in front of you does it say their storage facility must be located in Aransas Pass. So they are following the letter of the law to the ordinance. It states that their business, okay, our business is to store vehicles for the city. Every time we get called out, we take the vehicle to our storage facility. Okay, that's our business right there. And it states right there, their business within the city limits. Okay, so they're taking business and it should be going to the yard. Their business should be staying in Aransas Pass, not going to Port Aransas. Not all toes get to storage. Sometimes toes are. No, not all toes. Yeah, toes are, that. you know, to people's houses. What you're talking about are non consent toes. Yes, non consent which toes. Which is a good majority of why this particular ordinance was written. We had several prominent folks in town who were on council who this ordinance was written specifically for. Our job is just to make sure the ordinance is followed. There is, they are following it to the letter of the law as far as the ordinance is written. And just to add, they, they had approached us about getting on to the uh, rotational list and uh, it was shared with, through code enforcement that they have to follow the strict guidelines. Code enforcement uh, oversaw them coming into compliance of this before they were recommended for that, that uh, status. 
Uh, every towing service that ever has had to come, that's ever been on rotation, because you're talking about not consent tows, and you're talking, about, you're also saying that you know sometimes they get towed and stuff. A rotation list is non consent right there. You, that's not consent tow or anything. The, the whole base of a rotation is non consent, like you stated. So, so Mr. Kindervater, is your issue that non consent tows, which are de derived through the police department typically, are to be stored in Aransas Pass? Is that the issue? Or is it the issue that there is a third towing service operating in the city? No, my issue is that vehicles are getting taken to Port Aransas to store in Port Aransas. That's my issue right there. Through the non consent tow program? Yes. Okay, so the issue is non-consent tows should be stored in Aransas Pass. Yes, every every company that's ever been on rotation inside the city limits has always had to have a vehicle storage facility inside the city limits. There has never been anything where they've been allowed to have a have a place in Rockport or or um, Gregory or Port Aransas. That that's up to the council if they if you wish to have us put an ordinance amendment together that says the storage facility must also be located in Aransas Pass. I would like that. Here, actually, my name is Eric Kinnavar Sr., and really there's a couple issues on your ordinance that should be changed, and really uh, it would be nice if we sat down with some people and discussed it. You know, this is a safety issue having them hauled over to Port Aransas, number one. Number two, uh, that's a driver. He doesn't own that business. And the other thing, we were up here two months ago discussing zoning, where he's living at his own general business. So you're, you're giving a double standard. You're making everybody else that lives inside the city limits be zoned heavy commercial or whatever it is, but you're allowing them general business. This man should have never been allowed on. Um, money to that taxpayers. They get sent to Sinton County Jail now they got to pay for a taxi to go to Port Aransas to sit in a ferry. What happens if they go ahead? And this happens a lot. If they blow and they pass the breathalyzer, that officer usually has to bring that person down to the impound lot. Now you guys send that officer all the way to Port Aransas. Now what happens is if it's at night and you got two guys on shift, you got a guy sitting in Port Aransas. Fine. What happens if you have somebody who's handicapped? Let their car out. Their medication's in the car. It's 4th of July weekend. They got to sit in that ferry line to get across to get their medication. There's just so many issues that come up with this, not to mention the fact they're not paying no taxes on property in this town. They're not bringing no revenue into this town. Uh, it's not fair to the taxpayer. Now, it would be nice if there was some communication. You know, we've been on rotation. I, we're in corpus with 30 other companies. You know, we are in rotation in Rockport other companies. Not only to mention the fact that this city has denied other people to come in, but yet allowed that one particular company to come in. You're looking at some other problems from some other companies. You deny them, but you let this guy come in. That's, it'd be nice if we got some communication and somebody could get a hold of us tomorrow so I know what direction I have to go. Okay. The issue with the zoning at the general business, the general business allows the office component of the tow, and that's exactly what they're operating off of Commercial Street, the office component of the towing company. You know that movie? The storage unit is in Port Aransas. You know that movie with Al Sam Samuel, uh, you know, the golf movie? Right, no. where he's, uh, oh, I forget what it is. Anyway, he's playing a putt-putt golf course, man, and the thing keeps going up and down, up and down. He's trying to hit that thing in the hole. That's how I feel with the city. Every time somebody comes in, the ordinance gets changed to what they need. And it's not fair to the people that sit here and pay their taxes on time. The ordinance has not been amended. Yes, sir. Good evening. My name is Tim Allwell. I live in Port Aransas. I'm the T of B&T Towing. Brian, would you stand up? Brian Merritt is the B in B&T Towing. Uh, we came to Aransas Pass about a year ago and started investigating opening an office. We've met with everybody in the city that had anything to do with the zoning, the planning, the tow supervision, everybody. And we did everything we were asked. We are actively looking for 
a piece of ground that the city will approve a VSF facility on. But we have a VSF in Port Aransas. The city of Aransas passes in Nueces County part of it, and we are in Nueces County, so we are covered in everything that we found that we had to do. The problem with our competitors is our prices start at $75 for a local tow. Our, our price for a police call out is $155. So if you have to come get your car, it's less than $200. And they're starting at $250 to begin with. So we're just trying to add a little competition, be fair to your citizens, be fair to your tourists. And we pay taxes on the land we're renting. We're renting six city, uh, uh, not blocks, but six city lots because we had intended to put in a VSF on that property when we found out that we couldn't. But we're paying taxes as a city. The only thing that the city generates from the VSF is sales tax on $40, so it's $3.30. I mean, it's not a tax issue. It's a, gee, someone's eating my apple and going to cause the apple cart to turn over because pricing is going to have to come down to be reasonable. But if there's something the city needs done, we'll, be, we'll do it. We've invested in people, in a house, in an office, in equipment. We're here to drive your prices down to reasonable. We'll be here for a little while. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Is there anybody else? Hello, my name is Debbie Legro. I'm from Corpus Christi, Texas. I've been your APLAC agent here for the last nine years, which is the supplemental benefits to your employees. I'm here because I believe I've been treated unfairly this year. I understood we were going to RFP this year on medical benefits. Um, so I've been checking the website. So I started calling late May saying, hey, you know, where's the RFP? I'm not seeing anything. Nobody seemed to know. I guess it's coming. Come June, you know, where's the RFPs? What's been going on? Uh, we hired some firm to come in and set up the RFPs on our computer system so it can now be done online. Okay, I guess that's taken a little bit of while. I have called every week, every other week since May, all summer long, where's the RFP? I would think as a courtesy for being your vendor for the last nine years, even I'd get a courtesy RFP or something. Where is it? It's not online. I'm looking for it. I'm looking for it. Nobody can tell me where it is. Can I have a meeting with the city manager? Can I come out and talk? I'm your vendor. What's going on? What can I do? I handle your cafeteria plan for the city and the flexible spending account. Nothing. Never got a meeting, never got nothing, never saw an RFP. I don't know how many times I asked, where is that RFP? So, Thursday, I finally get to the new HR lady I found out you guys hired, and I introduced myself, very nice lady. I don't know if she's here or not. We talked, and she said, don't you know you've been replaced? So what do you mean I've been replaced? She goes, we went to RFP this summer, and you weren't in there, so you've been replaced. I said, by who? She said, Forrester's. Okay, I don't know that company. Are they supplemental? She said yes. And I said, where um, where did the RP ever end up at? She said, in the Aransas Pass Progress. I said, I have called and talked to this staff over a dozen times. Where is that RFP? What do I got to do to turn in my RP? Why can't I do an RP? I know there's one out there. Nothing. Never got a meeting, never got an RFP. Um, I'm kind of curious, did we go to RFP for major medical, dental, which does cost the city. The city does have to back up the major medical for sure, some of the life insurance. Everything I do, all of my supplement is paid 100% by the employees. It's no cost to the city at all. I don't know if anybody went to RFP except supplemental insurance. I feel I've been treated very unfairly. Nobody could ever give me a straight answer as to where is that RFP. Are we doing it or not? Maybe we're not doing it. Okay, it's open enrollment. Let's start open enrollment. Oh, you've been replaced. That was as of this Thursday. I got my certified letter in the mail two days saying I've been replaced. That was um, dated Thursday whenever I made the call. Mm -hmm. I'm just here to express my frustration. I would think after nine years of service, I know I've done a good service for this company. I've made so many claims for your employees, a lot of claims, big claims. I work for AFLAC, we're a Fortune 200 company. We are number one in the supplemental business out there. I just don't know what happened. I don't know why I wasn't involved. Um, I don't know. I guess what I ask of you is maybe to halt the enrollment. Can I be put on next, you know, next, um, next meeting's agenda to discuss this?
almost like it was a secret. Like there's an air of secrecy. Nobody would tell me nothing except, I don't know, I don't know, keep watching the website. It never made the website. You guys replace a piece of concrete out in the city park, it's on the website. You spruce up that beautiful swimming pool you guys have here in town. Painted it, fixed the bathrooms on the website. Softball fields on the website. Nothing's been on the website since June till this meeting. What's your answer on that, Sue? Well, she has been our provider for nine years, right. and we did have issues uh, a few years ago asking to change the calendar to match the budget cycle. Um, disregarded completely. And I have emails that show that. Um, secondly, when the council decided to go with GSM, because GSM is who handled the uh, soliciting of proposals, um, again, been a vendor for nine years, should watch our council agendas. GSM was listed as the provider to go out for RFP. It was a council item on the agenda. Again, a vendor for nine years should have invested in Aransas Pass. Aransas Pass Progress is the official newspaper of the city where all the RFPs are required to be posted by law. So. Uh, not a secret, it, the council voted, you guys voted in May, June to go out for RFP. GSM handled it, Forrester Benefits was a selected vendor. It was medical, dental, and supplemental insurance that was solicited for proposals. We received a variety of proposals and uh, ended up with a current TML enrollment, partial year, and a different supplemental package. And why could none of the employees ever tell me that it was in the newspaper, not online? Why was that such a big, big Debbie, deal? that I don't know, but a meeting with me could not have happened after that RFP went out. I've been trying to get a meeting with you since May. I have called numerous times, weekly, every other week. You're never around, you're never in, whatever, fine. Would you please let Sylvia know I'm calling. I would love to have a meeting with her. I would love to discuss, is something going on, why? I'm hearing there's an RFP, but I'm not seeing it. Silly me for not knowing to look. I'm sorry, I didn't look at the city council meetings. As far as changing the year, yes, we changed the year. Yes, it all happened. I had, the only meeting I've ever had with you was standing right there. When we were totally done with open enrollment in 2014, everybody had come in here. I've been here for two days. Everybody had signed all their paperwork, their cafeteria plan, their flexible spending. You walked in after it was all over and done and said, hey, this is what I want to do next year. I said, okay, great. Wow, we're talking, we're having a conversation, let's do that. I was packing up, leaving, and yeah, it did get a little messed up. You even personally signed your own flexible spending account that was dated from January 1st to December 31st mm -hmm. of 2014 with IRS rules, regulations, which is all highly regulated. You can't change and turn it to 10 one after we had already submitted everything. Did not catch that, I admit it. I did not catch it because the meeting was right there, was our meeting. I was totally done with enrollment and was walking out the door. There was prior emails, Debbie, but regardless, no, somebody else handled the RFP for us. That, that is the council vote, and once that RFP went out, there was no way to meet with you. I don't have any messages that you requested a meeting. I don't have any information of you calling or seeking information. The RFP was through GSM. And it was a council nice. action and posted in the paper. Weekly, weekly I called here. I know the staff, the staff knows me. How did me. you get the RFPs the previous eight years? We never ever done it ever. Never did it. Okay. It was just automatic. Uh, okay, I understand. This was the first year it's ever been done. So I was watching like crazy, trying to make sure I didn't miss it, calling, hey, go on vacation, don't want to miss this, you know. It, nothing. Right. I don't understand why nobody could just say, watch the newspaper also. What she's not telling you is the employees are still allowed to have AFLAC. We left that in the benefit package. The only difference is the employees won't have it payroll deducted. They're more than welcome to continue their AFLAC benefits. So Mr. Which Gross is, is not losing deal. any. So now they're losing the pre-tax benefits. So what was costing them a $20 benefit is now gonna be like a $26 benefit because they're losing the pre-tax advantage mm -hmm. of the FIC and withholding coming out before that. Which they can choose for and go pre-tax. So, the, the difference to Ms. LaGrosse is the convenience of having the employees have it payroll deducted. The employees still have the option to continue their AFLAC coverage. Yeah. My thing is, I feel like we should halt enrollment. This was done, I really feel it was done secretly. It's just weird that I've been a vendor for nine years and cannot get to you, cannot have a meeting with you, can't talk with you, we never talk. Well, Debbie, I and hate to just, let you know, but there's a lot more people that come okay. to have meetings. I would like having. to be put on the agenda next one is really what I would. I would like to be heard. 
I'm in total shock over this. Total shock. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. We would have to withdraw the RFP and cancel insurance benefits. That was part of the that was part of the package the council voted on two councils ago, something like that. Good afternoon. My name is Gary Bridges. I live at 633 South 13th Street and then here in Ranzas Pass. Um, my wife and I are owner operator of a small um, tour company, uh, boat company in the Port of Ranzas. Um, we're looking to expand our operation and um, wanted to know what our next step was to see if we might could get located somewhere in the harbor over here. So what do we have to do? We don't have any. We don't have any slips for lease or rent. He'd have to either negotiate with uh, Redfish Willies, uh, Erickson Jensen, or um, the uh, Handsome Sailor Yacht There's Charters. There's nothing on Huff Street there. No, all of that is under the current development agreement. On the both on, sides. Yeah. On this side of the, on this side of the. So I'd have to go see Redfish Willies or Handsome Sailor Yacht Charter Tom Duran. Okay. Thank you. Is there anybody else have a citizen comment to make? Okay, if not, that close our citizen comments for this evening. <coughs> it's going to bring us to item number <coughs> item number six, the consent agenda. All the consent agenda, the follow items for the consent agenda considered to be routine by city council will be enacted with one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless the council member so requests. If the discussion is desired, that item will be removed from the consent agenda will be considered separately. On these items, you have A, B, C, D, and E. I make a motion that we approve the consent agenda with the exception of B, Ordinance 2015-4120. Wish to have some more discussion on that ordinance. Yeah, can we, yeah, can we have a little clarification on... Can we get a second on that? Uh, oh, second. second. On the first, uh, Aye. Uh, You need to clarify. You shouldn't have voted. You need a clarification on B, on B? and J. Well, on ordinance, on uh, ordinance. section B, 2015, 4120. These right here. You know the exclusions, the prohibited uses. Oh. Okay. Prohibited uses. Yeah. Just yes. A little clarification, okay. please. Okay. The uh, bars, lounges, and taverns are not allowed as standalone uh, facilities. And that's the slick little nature that we're trying to avoid so that it doesn't just become a party town down there. You can have a bar uh, if it's associated with food. So you would have to have 51% food and 49% um, alcohol sales. And then uh, J, dance hall or nightclub. I'm not exactly sure what that one is other than I don't know. If that's something the that council would like to uh, remove from there, you, you need a motion that says with the exclusion of item J. So there can no, and, and the billiards are part, well, billiard hall, like pool tables. Mm -hmm. and so like a sports they, bar. Uh, well, sports bar associated with food. So that's okay. You could have a Hamptons Landing type establishment down there, um, not just a standalone type bar. And so the, the bars, lounges, it just as long as it's associated with food? As long as it's associated with food, yeah. It's got to meet the requirements of 49 and 51% according to TABC. And, and then on, on the 49% food, food, we're talking like burgers, nachos. Food. Food products. But uh, like salted peanuts, we're not considering that food. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, if it's for sale and 49 or 51% of your sales okay, come so from salted sell peanuts. Sell a lot of peanuts, you can, you can fly with that, okay. Just making sure. Really, the um, the idea with the Harbor District, if you recall, was an entertainment district, but it was um, situated so that it was not going to be just um, Party Town USA, because those type of industries tend to be cyclical with the seasons. We'll have a boom at uh, spring break, and then the rest of the time, you know, it'll languish or have. Harbor Town has a um, a component to attract what is going to be considered the residential and that piece to draw people in eat drink be lively as part of an overall not just drink 
Sure. Carol's on the Planning Commission. Oh. That specifically came up during the Planning and Zoning Commission meeting about the dances, uh, dance halls. I asked that myself. If it is a dance floor at a hotel or a resort, that is allowed. But a standalone dance hall was to be prohibited. And the same with the bars, lounges. As long as it was associated with a food establishment, then it was going to be okay, as she said, the 49%. But the standalone bars is what they were trying to avoid. But the dance hall issue was specifically mentioned. Okay. Well, it's all going to be a new development. It's all going to be new buildings. It's all going to be a new, fresh, standalone building uh, with beautiful landscaping because that has to go into the plans. Um, I don't know. I, I, I myself personally have uh, been uh, associated with developments like this all over the United States, and that is where uh, condo owners, homeowners um, meet the other people in their community. They go there to relax. They get away from their 80 hour weeks or whatever they're doing and they go there to relax and they want to go down to the local pub and meet their neighbors that are 20 condos down or seven houses down and that we we made relationships with these people and that I've known for 30 years in these type of developments and we go snow skiing with them and we you know we keep up with these people these are lifelong relationships that people made then council will need to table the item because the mda agreement that we entered with the developer had these specific uses prohibited in his request really mm -hmm. the developer mm -hmm. so we'll have to go back and have that discussion so if it was his request so table we need to table have, it uh, committee even go over rules because you guys could always overturn it but we have an mda agreement that just we need to make sure things are kosher and if the council still wishes to overturn it, that's certainly your prerogative. If you recall, the MDA has a list because there's, you know, hundreds of uses in the general business tables. We kept it very simple and just took out what was prohibited, sexually oriented businesses, ours. Um, I'm not sure about the dance hall because I seriously doubt anybody really had that conversation. I do recall the bars and sexually oriented businesses. So if you, and, and you're right, you can pass this right now. We just have to go back and amend the MDA. So Mr. the member of the council. I'm in favor of keeping it like it is. At, you know, 51% food and 49 bar. I don't see what the difference is. I just, I can see the. I think, the, I think I'd have to agree because I guess now most bars ha actually serve, serve food. food. So. Yeah. It's kind of it'll it could kind of meet those parameters. Yeah, yeah. We'll have an appetizer list or whatever. Mm -hmm. sure. This is kind of I guess it's just geared yeah. to. I think it just caught me off guard because it was. Well, look, we I think it was more um, the discussion that we had at, at the onset was um, we were trying to create the environment that had a lifelong cycle, a year long cycle for mm -hmm. economic development, and um, those those places that tend to generate bars and things like that. Um, and, and again, that's not the plan in the agreement, but 20 years from now, 30 years from now, you know, buildings start to age, development agreements get forgotten, things, so the, uh, the intent was to create a, an economy that is a year-round economy. If it's um, bars and lounges, those typically are cyclical with, like I said, spring break and, you know, party town, USA, summer long, typically, environments. When you mix it with food and you mix it with other uh, venues, it you know stretches what sure. you're able to entertain. Like a, like a they have a bar there, Correct. And then they have a restaurant attached to it. Correct. So that's when I saw that. That's what I was thinking about when you said 51 percent food and 49 bar. That's what I had in mind. I was curious because I just didn't see the 49, 50, and I just 
I just, yeah. No, yeah. yeah. No That's a typical TABC standard for restaurants. Okay. I second Ms. Abrego's motion. That's fine. All first, aye. 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 Let's bring us to item number seven, consider an act on city manager items. A, B, C, D, D. We've got a lot. Um, first one is the geotechnical study, digging in the dirt to see what kind of uh, construction standard is needed to keep those foundations and things in place. That's an amount not to exceed uh, $30,000. That is rock engineering under a subcontract with uh, LJA. An environmental review by LNV. Also, we need to, um, we have a, what I'm calling a phase one environmental assessment of the entire peninsula. The standard where houses are going to be built is a little bit different, so we need an environmental assessment for that. That's in an amount not to exceed $64,000. Uh, we move on to design and construction of the disc golf course, uh, almost there. Wetland delineation and uh, design is an amount not to exceed $25,000. We have the wastewater and water uh, impacts to the downstream environment from Harbor Town. Need to find out exactly what tap fees and things are going to be in Harbor Town because again, we keep telling the residents that the general population is not going to bear the brunt of Harbor Town. And then there's 13th Street. We have an absolute cluster down in 13th Street with drainage. Um, we have culverts that don't go anywhere. We have dead end ditches. So that's, um, there's already been some preliminary assessment and the uh, inspection and review is $10,000. There's a look what, for the 50 houses there? I'm sorry? There's about 50 houses going in that area, right? In, uh, phase, in phase one and two? No, oh, for a 13th Street area? Uh, I'm not Off sure. Off of, uh, is that Nelson? Nelson, right? Yeah, Nelson. That corner? There's going to be a bunch of houses built there. Oh, that's, people. um, La Costa construction. Right. Mm -hmm. We, we have an issue there with the drainage box, not just the textile drainage, but we ourselves just kind of scabbed on to the culverts there, and then things get filled. We don't have a map of what was actually put there. So we have to basically go in, review, almost excavate it out. Then we can get started on 13. 13 Street is a high priority that the council has tasked us with, so. This is north 13 or south 13? This is, oh, north. North 13. This is 13 Street by um, the Housing Authority There's and the That's the north side. Okay. And what is C, the Consider and Act on Professional Services? Who is that? That's with LJA. That's um, the disc golf course has wetland delineation and also design services. So that's an amount. The wetland delineation, I believe, is about $9,500. And the um, design itself is the remainder of that. You said it was LJA? Yes. Item 7A, what would be the favor of the council? We can, can, can we um, do the whole? Yes. Yeah, okay. I'll, I'll make a motion we approve items 7A, B, C, D, and E. I second. All first say aye. 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 And just the council's the council information, it is coming out of savings, bond savings, and also actual revenue. Previous item number nine, considering that the development service items, which would be planning A, annexation of Sherwood Forest area. John, you want to? <sighs> well, <coughs> I 
This is uh, part of the areas that we're going to start squaring, squaring off the city, annexing, taking small bites. Yeah. This is the first part, Mayor Council. Uh, this is the first part of uh, a couple of annexations we're, we're proceeding on. Uh, this will be right off of uh, State Highway 35 bypass, just across from Allen Samuels, the Sherwood Forest. Uh, you can see on the diagram that's where, where we're going. Uh, that'll be the first part of that area trying to square off the city. Yes. So it's that, that whole street. red section? So yes, sir. Correct. Uh, I have uh, Johnny Perales here who has been doing most of the work. Mayor Council, would it be a slight correction? If you look at the, the red area to the far right, there's a rectangle that's kind of cut out front that uh, really belongs within the proposed area. If you extend this line down, this is the actual area that shows up in the, the documents that we put together. So add that. Yes. Items, uh, action items actually before the council this evening are really uh, two that we're looking for. And within your package, you should have, uh, you should see a draft service plan document which identifies the various uh, public services that are provided either directly by the city or through the city by a third party. And that document identifies how those will be extended or provided for the area. The other primary item for action tonight is the resolution before you. And the resolution uh, covers that as well as identifying the, the dates for the formal public hearings that need to be conducted as part of the annexation uh, procedures. So on this proposed annexation, um, we will be able to provide them sewer and water in a timely fashion? Within the 10 years. Water is, is most of this, I think this area already has city water uh, mm -hmm. almost uh, it, almost every property. But if you drive out there, you can see uh, there's already fire hydrants here and there. So uh, the water system is, is substantially there. Mm -hmm. uh, another reason uh, this area was attracted, it's substantially developed. There are vacant lots here and there. Uh, the, the streets are, for the most part, all paved and in relatively good condition. Considering some of the, the issues we've seen come before council, we were very leery about uh, taking on an area with a lot of street issues. So if you drive through these uh, little neighborhoods, most of the streets are uh, paved and in relatively good condition. If you recall, we're uh, applying for a grant with Grant Works for uh, sewer in that general area. It's a five hundred thousand dollar grant, so we'll be able. That grant is awarded. What, what is the drainage like out there? Because I, I was always under the assumption that the uh, state highway created like a dike, so everything would tend to flood back there. Is that not true? I would have to defer to staff and see if there's actually been any significant drainage complaints. I mean, in the last uh, well, a couple of months ago, we did go through pretty substantial uh, rain events. Mm -hmm. and, and this was did not appear one of the. Uh, is focus areas as far as drainage issues. So I'm, I'm sure they had some drainage issues, but they were not of the magnitude that we were seeing in other parts of the city. Okay. Yeah, it sounds like we'll probably be able to check it out this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> we have the resolution before you, Council, this evening. Uh, and within the packet was also a, a calendar of the various tasks that need to be completed and uh, the dates for those. So as you can see, the, the public hearings are currently scheduled for October 19th at a regularly scheduled meeting, and then we would follow up with a special uh, scheduled meeting uh, the following week on the 26th. And the reason we have to uh, delay these somewhat is uh, once the resol if the resolution uh, moves forward, then we have to provide notification to all of the property owners as well as the various uh, public service providers within the 
area. So yeah, I've got a stack of about 100 letters uh, ready to go. Uh, we'll be working with staff uh, if the item moves forward to uh, put those letters out in the next couple of days. And then uh, that is a 30-day uh, time period from the public notification until we can actually have the public hearings. <coughs> bit of reference data. Hey Johnny, is that on both sides of Oak Lane or is it just on one side? Looks like it's uh, one side. The yeah, existing, so it just runs the existing city limits come up to Oak Lane. Uh -huh. I apologize, uh, Mr. Hyatt. Uh, that area to the right is already within the city limits. It was part of three major parcels annexed to the city okay. as part of the, I believe it was the Iron Gator Southern Oaks yeah. uh -huh. yes, okay. development. So Philip, so there's a plan in there. Those three areas were annexed uh, about in the 2005 time frame uh, under the, uh, the, I want to say the developer's name is Iron Gator, and it falls under the, the name of the subdivision you just mentioned. How many, how many dwellings are there in this area? Based on the satellite imagery, Mr. Lawrence, about eight. Eight? Eighty. Oh, eighty. Yes, yes. And that's an excellent uh, point that uh, uh, Mr. Lawrence has brought up. To annex property through this process, which is the exempt process or the short process, uh, we have to be very careful that the area that we look at has less than 100 uh, residences. Right. Mm -hmm. Dwellings. Dwellings. There's a difference. Res no. Dwellings, residences, yes. Uh, and so as we look at the area, we pull up the satellite imagery uh, and, and look at it pretty close. We go out and, and do a few uh, drive-throughs of the neighborhood to make sure there's no, uh, you know, because you know, the satellite imagery is not 100% current. It, it can lag a year, two, three, four years. So uh, we give ourselves a little more uh, leeway. So uh, this was about 79 or 80 uh, dwellings. <laughs> and, and, we, and that's where we cut the line off. I mean, there was some interest in going further north toward 1069, but uh, we, that was decided against for more than one reason. One, we, we, we took a chance on getting too close to the 100 dwellings, and two, that may have put us in conflict with the colonial grant, uh, wastewater grant, that's uh, being pursued uh, for that area up there. Now, that grant should allow uh, wastewater improvements to take place, which would ult ultimately provide service for, for, for this area. That grant work will get us across the, uh, 35 and, and back into this residential area. Just a little bit of data on um, the area in question. This is data out of the uh, uh, SAMPAP uh, appraisal district records and files. Uh, the total property market value for this area now, this is just the total value without any discounts uh, or any tax exemptions. It's about $5.4 million as a taxable uh, property. But, you know, there again, that does not include uh, over 65 exemptions and so forth. So the actual uh, taxable value will be somewhat less than the $5.4 million. Is there any other questions from council? Thank you, John. Yes, appreciate it, sir. Do I hear a motion for approval for item 9A? Okay. Mayor, the, Mayor, the, the motion needs to be uh, to authorize uh, Even if it doesn't say consider next? Even if it doesn't say consider next? It's up oh, top. Yeah, never mind. It does up there. Yeah, it sure does. 
serves the plan. And I brought the resolution so that it's public here. I got it. Okay. I make a motion we approve the meetings. On the 19th and 26th of October. On the 19th and 26th of October. Second the motion. All first say aye. 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 This will bring us to item 10, considering that the finance items which would be A and B. Uh, Mayor, item A. Um, I, I, item A concerns the library overbid. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Throughout the year, we've talked to you about the library being a little bit over budget because they were doing some pretty major improvements. Um, they got some new furniture, they painted, they got new carpet. And we had told you at some point we would come to you and ask for a transfer of funds from the overbid trust um, in order to cover that. We were finally at that point at the end of the year. And they've spent a little over $40,000. And so we'd just like you to authorize the transfer of funds from the overbid, which there's plenty of money in the recovery um, to make up for what the library didn't increase. Okay. Is there any questions for council? No. I have a motion for approval for item 10 a Well, I make a motion that we approve the transfer of funds from the overbid trust in the amount of forty thousand seven hundred and thirty one dollars and sixteen cents. I second. All in favor say aye. 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 Ms. Dahl? Okay, item ten B is um requesting a modification of the um water rate ordinances. It's to add a section D which would allow us to do an automatic increase when one of our vendors um, increases their rate. Um, as you know, we buy from Corpus Christi, we buy from the uh, San Papa Municipal Water Authority, who buys from Corpus Christi. And last year we had increases from both of those parties, so we had to come and pass through and come to you and get you to approve both of those increases. So rather than come to you every time they raise their rates, we just request that you let us automatically do that, just the pass through part, in a very small our cost of printing new pamphlets, putting new stuff on the website, making the change that the staff has to go through. Um, what we proposed was um, a 3% administrative fee. And when I worked it out, it was, you would have to round up to make it be a pen. So it would be um, less than um, a penny per thousand gallons. Um, it's very little extra income, so we're not adding a bunch of money to our income. It's just to keep our water and sewer margins the same based on what we're doing in our budget. Makes sense? Yes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> It'll be the Federal Council item 10B. I'll make a motion we approve item 10B. Second the motion. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you, Don. Actually, we're done. Notify our customers. We're going to continue. We'll let everybody know, and Sylvia will continue to have it as a city manager item. Um, you're going to notify know what happens in information that we send out. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Items 13 A and B, we'll, no action on those, right? So, Correct. So that will open up Mr. Lawrence for item 13 C. Thank you, Mayor. I declare public hearing open for the purposes of uh, hearing the uh, proposed Ranches Pest Crime Control Prevention District no. budget for 2015. Municipal Development District budget. Yeah. We passed CMB. on the crime control. Oh, I'm control sorry. I, did, I didn't hear you. Okay. Then items uh, 13. C and D. Yeah. Well, item C is public hearing on Ranch, or the Ranch Bash Municipal Development District fiscal year 2015-2016 budget. Is there someone here that wants to present that? 
I'll do it. The, uh, the Municipal <laughs> Development District basically receives um, total income of about $827,000. Uh, Mr. Brigo sits on the MDD board. If you recall, the MDD has two projects specific to what it can collect and pay, and that is the pool and the Civic Center. Several years ago, they entered into an interlocal with the city, and the city took over all of the expenses for the pool, and the MDD continued to fund the Civic Center, including the shortfall in operations. So the MDD is in existence so long as there are outstanding bonds to be paid. Um, the majority of their income does go to pay the bonds. There is, they have a, a nominal budget in terms of office supplies. They reimburse us for our staff expense of about, oh goodness gracious, less than $10,000, let's put it that way, less than $5,000 actually. Um, they do put aside $80,000 for civic center maintenance. We do not draw that without their approval. Uh, they have a very active role in what gets fixed and approved and et cetera. The, um, uh, the vast majority, more than 550000 is bond payments uh, that is made up through sales tax. The uh, shortfall that they fund for the Civic Center, Sara Lee has done an amazing job in decreasing that shortfall from a high of $332,000 to um, this year probably in the $250,000 range. Last year she ended right at $203,000. So 252 is with an additional staff. So we're expecting some uh, additional bookings. And if you see the parking lot in the Civic Center, you understand she's doing an, a phenomenal job. The um, transfer from the fund does not happen until the end of the year when we know what the actual loss is going to be for the Civic Center. Uh, and just so you guys are aware, those kinds of facilities never make any money. Mm -mm. We're lucky to break even. So um, bringing down a loss of um, you know seventy thousand dollars over the three years that uh, Sarah Lee's been here is pretty amazing. That's seventy thousand net because there's money that's been going into operations and money that's been going into staff. Any questions of the council? No. Anyone in the audience have any questions? If not, then this uh, item 13C public hearing is closed. Those bring us to item 13D, consider an act of the rents passed municipal development districts for the year 2015 to the 2016 budget. What is the favor of the council on item 13D? I'll make a motion. We approve item 13D. Second the motion. All first, say aye. Can I have a question? Aye. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Can I say anything? <laughs> yeah, I sure. I get it. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Can, can she Vicky vote, vote since on she sits on, on the board? She sits on the board. Probably shouldn't. Okay. Well, I understand. Okay. All first, say aye. 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 And one abstain. <laughs> Correct? Yes. Okay. You're faster on the uptick, Vicky. Faster on the uptick. I have to make sure I get Fast this brings us to item 13E. Mr. Lawrence. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, item 13E is a uh, public hearing on Ranch Pass operating budget for fiscal year 2015 2016. Shelby. Uh, Mayor and Council, the uh, operating budget that's been presented to you is what I'm calling Proposal 1. It shows. Uh, what I gave you was what we adopted in 13, what we adopted in 14, what the staff wish list was for 2015, and what it what was actually um, budgeted. It is um, relatively stable. The increases that you're going to see are in uh, the fire department and the police department. What we told the council we were going to do with public works in terms of streets is uh, use the bond savings that we've had as opposed to try to get another penny from the residents here or there to go borrow some more money. We need to use what we have before uh, going out for any more. There are relatively few increases in any fees or anything that's associated with this revenue. What this is is really just increases in valuation. It's increases in uh, just our sales tax and our collectibles. Everything else remains relatively flat in terms of what increases the residents will see. We did not propose an increase in the water fee. We did not propose an increase in any fire safety fee or any of the other fees that are already on the um, on the books. There is uh, some, there is a 10% reduction in staff, and I and I want to explain that to the council. 
for a city our size, we have uh, a relatively large staff. We are only uh, a few down from Portland who has double our population. I am firmly convinced that we can be more efficient with the staff that we have. And I want to give you an example of that. An example, it's a blatant example in public works and parks specifically. We have crews of four that go out in a truck. Um, what we're going to do is develop what I'm calling a hot shot team. When we have an issue where there's a line break, there's a hydrant issue, something, we have a crew of two, one or two people who can go and assess the situation and give me a rundown of equipment, personnel, things that are needed to fix that situation immediately. If we need to dispatch a crew off of a current job, then we will do that. Right now what we're doing is we're sending that crew of four to assess. Stops the job that we're doing, things languish, things take time, things don't make it back on the work order system. So this is an effort to be not only more efficient, but to be better responsive when things happen. Things aren't broken for longer periods of time. We do have equipment that has arrived finally. I know last year was the purchase. A lot of it has taken time to get here. The staff is being trained on it as we speak. Um, I, you know, again, I wish things could happen as fast as we would like them to happen. Could they happen faster? Absolutely. And we'll make a move to do that this, uh, this year, but there is movement that's happening regardless. Um, it has uh, relatively little increases in anything else. Our chamber contract remains the same. It's a percentage. Our EMS contract remains the same. Our bond payments are relatively flat, uh, which is what we promised council. And there is additional reserve of $150,000 put in there. Now, I know uh, there was some question as to drawing down our fund balance and drawing down our reserve. And again, I will tell the council, you've not had a reserve. Uh, what is on the balance sheet is assets, our water lines, sewer lines, and things that have monetary value. But just like your own personal account, when you have a garage sale at your home, just because something's worth $10 doesn't mean you're going to get $10 for it. So some numbers on the balance sheet are specifically for financial purposes when we borrow and things like that, any liens that need to be put against things. A great majority of our uh, increase came from uh, the increase in valuation. The annexation, all of those uh, new construction means increases in our garbage rate, increases in um, rents and things like that. The the big issue that's going to be coming before us is the garbage contract will be up for negotiation next year as well. We will be going out for RFP. And I know you've heard a lot about contracts tonight, and that is really, that's one of the tough decisions about my job is making sure that we are getting the best bang for our buck. And long-time contracts, 5, 10, 15, 20 years, obviously aren't getting us the best bang for our buck, especially when there are additional vendors out there. And that is my sole, that's my sole purpose when we go out for RFP, just making sure we're covered and we're not paying any extra that we don't have to pay. The, um, all the other departments are relatively flat, so I, I welcome any questions that the council may have at this point. We notified them after after our legal our legal issue. We will send another notice as well. Okay. Um, there's a couple of things this year that are going to be up for uh, discussion. Uh, some of those harbor leases have automatic renewals, and some of those harbor leases are done. Uh, the um, the team oil, for example, is done. Garbage is also another one. Um, we're probably going to be looking at phone and other phone services just as a way to keep trimming. Our electricity contract, remember I came to you, you know, I guess it was two years ago, and unbeknownst to me, you guys had entered into a 10-year GEXA plan, whatever that was. That's also going to be coming up next year. So you'll have more vendors on the floor saying I was unfair. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, if it's to the benefit of the city and the residents, then by all means, I'll take my beatings any day. Any other questions of the council? No. No. Any questions or comments of the audience? If not, then the public hearing is closed. No action necessary. No. Uh, item 14, sir. Uh, I'd like to just tell.